everybody, Kendra the Vet Tech here, and in today's video, we are going to learn about some basics for sheep appointments. So the first thing that we'll talk about today is some restraint techniques for sheep. And the first thing I wanna show you is a halter. It's always a good idea to have a halter on an animal for kind of a backup restraint device. Even with sheep, when we're doing rumping as the primary physical restraint, it's always good to have the backup of a halter. When we're placing a halter on a ruminant, we wanna make sure that the up and down adjustable piece goes behind their ears. And then the lower adjustable piece that's sideways goes under their chin. So that way this stays the same size and this one can adjust as their mouth moves. So we're gonna start today with just some restraint techniques. I'm gonna have my assistant, my dad, Rick, with me here today. We've already got this flock moved into the barn into a smaller enclosure. Just another reminder for you, when you are working with herd animals or flock animals, their prey instinct is so high that you'll always wanna take the whole flock or herd with you and then pick off the animal you're wanting to work on once they're in the smaller enclosure. So we're gonna step in the barn and grab the ewe that we wanna work on today and we'll be right back. All right, so we caught our ewe up. We had our entire flock in a smaller enclosure in the barn picked off this ewe that we wanna work with today. I have her halter on her, and you can see I've got this less adjustable piece going up above her ears with the more adjustable chin strap coming over on the left side. So that's really important that you get the adjustable chin strap on the left side of the animal. And that's true for the small ruminant halters as well as the larger cattle halters. So we'll talk about a few different ways that we can restrain the sheep. We can do a standing restraint on them, which makes it really easy to do things like weight tapes, or if they're having some issue maybe along their back that the veterinarian needs to check out. That way we can leave them standing for a few minutes for the exam. Your best friends when you're trying to do standing technique restraint is to find a corner in the barn and a wall in the barn. So structures are super helpful when you're trying to restrain these types of animals. So usually what I like to do is get their rear end backed into a corner. And then what I'll do is I'll use my body on their front end. So I'll generally loop an arm under their chin, minding that we're not closing off their airway. Gently move them up towards the wall. And then I'll bend my front knee and brace on their chest. This discourages forward movement from the animal. And then I have the wall behind them so they won't back out, as well as this wall on the far side that controls the body on the other side. I'll also adopt a wide stance. So I'm using my back knee to keep the back at their hip pinned up against the wall as well. So that's generally how I accomplish a standing technique with a sheep. It's good for blood draws and like I said, weight tapes in certain parts of the physical exam. The most common technique that we use with sheep is a technique called rumping. And I'll show you a couple of different ways that I go about that. So I can do a rumping on a sheep in two different ways. You can do it by yourself, but I'm kind of a short lady. So if I get a sheep that's rather large, my wingspan is simply not long enough for me to be able to rump a sheep by myself. This particular ewe is pretty small, so I'll show you how I would rump a sheep by myself. So what we'll do first is get control of her front end with this arm here. And then you wanna take your far arm, reach for the far hind leg, pull up and twist. Then we get them into a nice seated position. This is typically used for shearing. We do a lot of vet work with them in this position and it's a really easy way to trim their feet as well. I really encourage you to find a wall. So I rump this sheep up against this wall here. It's not crucial, but it saves your back if the sheep is gonna be like this for a few minutes. 
Now I'll let this U back up and I'll have my assistant step in and we'll rump a sheep together. Okay, so now if you're in a situation where you're too short to rump a rather large sheep, or in some cases if you can't lift quite that heavy of a load, you can always rump a sheep with a friend. So I have my dad here, Rick, he's my assistant today. He's gonna help me show you how I do it with a friend here. So the person that is controlling the front end will still do the same technique with their arm under the sheep's ch chin here. And then they're just going to be responsible for the front half of the sheep. So he's gonna be responsible for making sure the front legs make it up and helping the body to twist and sit in the right position. My job is going to be the back end. So I'll be in charge of the back legs, pulling them the same direction and getting the sheep sat up on her rump. Okay? All right. So we're gonna go one, two, three. Perfect. And then if you can lean back against the wall. Here we go. Perfect. So we got this little U rumped up for us here. Found a wall for dad to lean against so his back doesn't get to him. And now we're gonna go to work on some other stuff with this U. All right, so let's talk about trimming feet. So trimming goat feet and trimming feet on sheep is the same concept. They have the same structure to their feet here and we're taking the same technique when we're trimming. And what we're wanting to do is create an even walking surface between the hoof wall, the sole, and the heel. This U here has pretty well maintained feet, but she does have some edges that we can smooth out. So I'll just show you how we do that for her. So take your nippers, pick them out, kind of similar to what you would do with horse feet so that you can see the areas where the hoof wall is overgrown and where we need to trim. The reason why we wanna trim this hoof wall down is so that it doesn't create pocketing where bacteria can be held where they'll end up in hoof rot situation. So what we'll do for this U is take our nippers and just nip away at this hoof wall here. And you can see now I've created a nice even walking surface even with her sole. And you can just take small bites at a time. If it's your first time and you're not really sure how much is too much, just take small bites because you'll notice on this U, you have the white line here. Once you're trimming off too much, it will start to turn pink before it bleeds. So you'll know you need to stop. And then on this other call here, I'll just show you, she has some heel hanging off. So we'll go ahead and just trim that heel off for her slight edge on her hoof wall here. We'll take that off. And then she's good to go with nice even feet on the bottom here. The other thing that we can do while they're in this position is it's really easy to give injections under the skin injections such as vaccines. We can give them right here under the skin where the wool breaks and it's really easy in this position to access this area to do routine vaccination. You could draw blood on a sheep in this position. It's a little more difficult with their neck craned like this, but it is possible. But we'll let this you go ahead and stand up and we'll talk about a little bit of quick blood collection. All right, so we've got this U back in standing restraint here. I just also wanted to take this moment to point out, you know, this is another good reason to have a halter on these guys. Even though she was in a rumped position and doing well that way, when we go to let them up, this is a really easy way to have control of the sheep so they don't run away while you're trying to maybe reposition them to do something else, another treatment or more diagnostics. So we'll talk about blood draw a little bit. Sheep are pretty unique because of their thick wool. It can kind of make blood draws tricky sometimes. So we don't wanna just indiscriminately shave sheep. Sometimes the shepherd can be upset about that. The farmer can be upset about that because it might be a show lamb or something to that nature where we don't wanna mess up their wool. So do be sure that you always ask before you shave if you need to for a blood draw. All right. So remembering our anatomy, we've got our trachea coming down here. So our jugular vein should be right along in this neighborhood here. So we're gonna occlude really well low here. And a lot of times you can feel the vein if you just gently roll your thumb and occlude and unocclude 
and then occlude and unocclude. Sometimes if they've been shorn relatively recently, like this girl here, her wool is not super thick yet, I can see the vein coming and going and coming and going. So we'll, give, we'll draw some blood on this little girl here. I've got my jugular vein right here. And there we have it. There's your blood draw on your sheep. Thanks for joining in with me today on learning some basic sheep restraint techniques and some other basic sheep appointment skill sets. If you have any questions or concerns, do feel free to comment below. You can also shoot me an email <laughs> at kendrathevettech at gmail.com. Do feel free to find me on Facebook or Instagram or at my podcast, Kendra the Vet Tech, on your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks, guys.